Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've got two of the very best laptops you can buy, basically. I've got the new MacBook Pro 16 with the brand new 5600M graphics card. That's the 700 pound uh, optional extra, so the most powerful graphics chip, versus this guy. It's the new XPS 17 from Dell. So the question is, if you do have, you know, the best part of two or three grand to spend on a new high-end laptop, which one of these should you go for? But I should say, I've actually bought both of these myself. These are both retail samples. They're not review models. So as you can probably guess, this was a very expensive video to make. So if you guys do find it useful, then a little like and even a subscribe would be amazing. I'll come back to pricing and of course value for money at the end, but to give you an idea, this MacBook Pro 16 cost me three and a half thousand pounds, whereas this XPS 17 sent me back 2,750. But before we get into this comparison, let me just put this to one side for a moment and bring in this guy, his one I made earlier. This is the new XPS 15. I just wanted to show you side by side with the 17 while well, I've got them both here. So I reviewed this guy a couple of weeks ago. I'll leave a little pop-out banner if you want to watch that after this. Uh, but do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a full video comparing the 15 versus the 17, because while I've got both, maybe that'd be pretty interesting. But yeah, let me know if that's something you'd like to see. So let's dive in. And first of all, I'm sure you'll agree these are both beautifully designed laptops. However, as you can see, the XPS is a little bit thicker and also depending on the model you go for, quite a bit heavier. So there's actually two models of this, one with a 56 watt hour battery and then this one with a 97 watt hour battery. Uh, the lighter one is 2.1 kilograms, this is 2.5 kilograms, which is pretty hefty. I mean, it's not bad at all for a 17 inch performance laptop, but compared to the MacBook Pro 16, which weighs just about two kilograms, the XPS is a good deal heavier and credit to Apple, they've actually crammed in a massive 99.9 watt hour battery. Now, obviously if this is gonna be your desktop replacement and you just keep it on your desk all the time, then it doesn't really matter what it weighs. But if you're taking this to college or work with you and you're putting it in your backpack, then that weight might make a bit of a difference. This is definitely a little bit more portable. But build quality is top notch on both and which looks better really comes down to personal preference with this space gray all aluminum MacBook versus the carbon fiber design of the Dell. Now I do appreciate there's only so many ways you can make a good laptop, but it does feel like Dell's taken maybe a page out of Apple's book this year with the speaker grill flanking the keyboard, the much bigger trackpad, and also the shift to full USB-C. Both laptops offer fingerprint readers, but the Dell also gives us face unlocking with the Windows Hello webcam. As for the webcams, well, to be honest, they're both pretty ropey. It's 720p on both. And when you've come from something like the iPad Pro or any of the Microsoft service lineup, at least, you know, they're both on the top bezel, which is nice. But I think the MacBook's slightly better. Uh, the Dell's very noisy, even in quite good light. So neither are great, but I guess they'll do. So actually, when it comes to ports, they're pretty much identical. We get uh, four USB-C Thunderbolt 3s and a headphone jack on the MacBook Pro, and also four USB-Cs Thunderbolt 3s uh, on the XPS uh, 17. I forgot what I was talking about there, along with the headphone jack. But also, Dell did one-up the MacBook by adding a full-size SD card reader, which, as a video editor myself, is a pretty handy extra, although generally for both, I'm gonna wanna carry on an adapter anyway. As for the keyboard and the touchpad, they're both lovely to use. And again, it really is subjective. The Dell's keys have a softer, more rubbery feel, whereas the MacBook feels, well, for want of a better word, more clacky. I can't fault either though, and they both have gigantic touchpads. But I guess just given how slick the gesture support is with Mac OS, I'm slightly leaning towards the Mac. But aside from maybe the Surface Book or a ThinkPad laptop, these are two of the best laptops to use. Now for this bit of the video, I'm gonna talk about speaker quality, but there's a problem. Let me see if you can hear the difference when I play the same uh, clip on both laptops. Let's start with the, uh, the MacBook. My mic is here for reference. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've just finished building this guy. It's my new video editing slash gaming setup. And Sounds pretty good, go to the Dell. Not quite as good. There's clearly something wrong with my XPS 17, which is a real shame, so I can't do a proper speaker comparison, uh, although right now, at least uh, from my experience, I've not heard a better speaker than what we get in the MacBook Pro 16, but just listen to that. I've updated it. I've even, yes, turned it off and on again. There just doesn't seem to be anything I can do, so I'm gonna have to return and exchange this model because, well, the speaker's broken, essentially. Hopefully, it's just this one. I've not heard any other reports from anyone else, although if you do buy one of these yourself and you do have that issue as well, let me know in the comments, and then hopefully we can get an idea of how widespread it is, but I guess that's a point to the MacBook. 
Anyway, moving on, and for me there's three reasons these laptops stand out. The design, the performance, and also the displays, which look absolutely stunning on both, and also are impressively color accurate, although the MacBook leans towards the DCI-P3 gamut, whereas the XPS is more accurate in terms of Adobe RGB. So they both look great, but there are some important differences between the screens. Most notably, the XPS 17, which first of all, in this model is a full 4K, well actually 4K plus display, and we get a touch screen. So that's pretty handy. And if you pair it with Dell's Active Stylus Pen, then if you're into your digital drawing, or like me, maybe just your doodling or note taking, then that is something you just simply can't have on a MacBook Pro right now. The XPS also supports Display HDR 500 and Dolby Vision HDR, which is a nice extra for watching or even editing 4K content. However, good news for Apple fans is in the upcoming Mac OS Big Sur update, Safari will support proper HDR and Dolby Vision as well. So the fact is, the XPS is sharper, you can watch and edit 4K natively, and the touchscreen makes it more versatile. The downside, of course, of that resolution is it impacts battery life, but we'll come back to that in a second. Now, that's not to say there's anything wrong with the MacBook Pro screen. It's still incredibly sharp and has the same peak brightness of 500 nits, but it just lacks a few of the bells and whistles of the 4K Dell. I think something we can almost all agree on, though, is the preference for this 16 by 10 aspect ratio, or even maybe like 3 by 2 like you get on the Surface laptops or the Huawei Matebooks. I really do hope we see this trend continue when we get more of these taller laptops. All right, let's get to the good bit. Let's talk about performance. Now, compared to the XPS 15, the 17 here gives us the option for a more powerful 10th Gen i7 10875H processor. We also now get the option for the NVIDIA RTX 2060 Max-Q. I've also got 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage in here, both of which are upgradable on the Dell, and I'll probably add another 16 gigs down the line, but that's something you can't do on the MacBook. As for the Pro 16, we still have last year's 9th Gen processors, along with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. But importantly, as I say, I've spec'd this one with the newer and faster AMD Radeon Pro 5600M. All right, so that's the setup, but let's jump into a few benchmarks, starting with the processor. And in Cinebench R20, the XPS 17 is 5.5% faster. In Geekbench 5, single core performance is neck and neck, although surprisingly, the XPS 17 pulls away with its multi-core score, with its 17.5% lead over the MacBook. But what about graphics performance? Well, in Geekbench's OpenCL test, the RTX 2070 Max-Q in the Dell is nearly 80% faster than the 5600M. And then in UniEngine Valley, it's an old benchmark, but it checks out. And using the Extreme HD preset with OpenGL, the MacBook actually performed better at 72 FPS versus 62 on the Dell. So finally, in the NovaBench test, the MacBook scores 2309 versus 3288 on the XPS. So what exactly have these benchmarks told us? Well, not a whole lot, if I'm honest, because, well, it seems pretty clear that, at least in terms of multi-core CPU performance, the XPS 17 does win, and as you'd expect, considering it's the 10th gen versus the 9th gen chips, in terms of graphics performance, I think there's just too many variables. Obviously, we've got Windows versus Mac, NVIDIA versus AMD, the fact that I have to use some older benchmarks because uh, not everything is available on both, so it gets a little tricky, although, as a rule of thumb, I'd say that the graphics kind of perform within 20% of each other, uh, but depending on the test. So really, it's going to come down to real-world performance. So let's start with some games, which I know obviously isn't really the main reason you buy these laptops. These are more, I'm going to, I hate to say it, but you know, creator laptops or work laptops. Now I did the best I could with the limited range of games available on both, but here are the results playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Total War Three Kingdoms with high settings at Full HD+. But what about video editing? That's the most important thing for me. Well, I ran the same 10 minute 4K export test on each laptop in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, plus Final Cut Pro on the Mac. And the results are really interesting. The XPS took less than half the time of the Mac in Premiere and even knocked off a good 30 seconds in DaVinci. Final Cut is still incredibly well optimized for the Mac though. And I know for a lot of people, that's a big reason to go for an Apple laptop. So really, it all comes down to what program you use. And finally, in terms of battery life, it's a pretty clear win for the MacBook. We get the slightly bigger battery inside, plus of course that lower resolution, all helps it last a couple of hours longer than the Dell. So we're looking at about eight and a half hours with average use on this guy, versus about six hours on the XPS 17, which is about the same, maybe half an hour longer uh, than the XPS 15, also the 4K model. But if you are on the go and traveling a lot, then the battery life of this does make it a better option. 
But before we finish, let's talk about pricing because this is where things get a little tricky, at least in terms of the Dell, because there's so many different options available. And also it's very hard to get the same SKU in the UK and the US. So right now in the UK, the XPS 17 starts at 2,600 pounds, but in the US it starts from as little as $1,400. But that's just with integrated graphics and an i5. If you want this model I have here, it'll set you back £2,750 or $2,850 in the US. Now compared to the MacBook Pro 16, which starts at £2,400, the same in dollars, or for this model with the 5600M, it costs £3,500, again the same in dollars. Although that is with the more expensive i9, with an i7 and the upgraded graphics, it's $3,200. But either way, a good few hundred more than the Dell and still with last gen processors. But altogether, I think for me, mainly because I used to use Premiere Pro for editing, I would probably go with the XPS 17, but you can't go wrong with either. And of course, it all comes down to how you use it. So what about you? Which one of these guys or none of the above would you go for? Let me know in the comments below. And if you did find this video helpful and you want to see more from me, then don't forget to hit that little subscribe button below. It's always really appreciated. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat. Boom. That was a long video. <laughs>